Welcome to Talking Giants Player Profiles and Projections. And today we have Carter Coughlin, 6'3, 236 pounds, 24 years old. And we saw a preseason game of him in his new position, so we can talk about him now. He had 22 and a half sacks at the University of Minnesota. Look at my ratio on uh, Slater film breakdown. Like, Carter Coughlin has real pass rush moves. Like, like pretty good pass rush moves, especially for someone that was drafted in the seventh round by the New York Giants, the first of four seventh rounders in, in 2020. So he's a very interesting player where it's like he has pass rush moves. He has pass rush moves better than a lot of guys that were drafted ahead of him, but he didn't really have the size and the strength to be an edge. You know, he played 18% of the snaps and became more involved later in the year just because of, you know, missing guys on the edge and injury. You know, Carter down, Zimenez gone, Fackrell gone, Golden gone. Like, they, they just had to play whoever they had on the roster. And what he showed at the edge was he could win versus slow offensive tackles. But, like, you look at him versus Jedrick Wills, and Jedrick Wills just totally owned him. You know, and that's someone who has good strength and athleticism. So he was probably never going to be a consistent role uh, as an edge player in the NFL because he had that ceiling. But he looks really good at inside linebacker so far. I have a pop quiz for you. I've tweeted it out once, and I think I've said it on the show. But let's see how closely you pay attention to the things that I say. Carter Coughlin had two QB hits last year. One of them was an interesting one that applies to his role in 2021. Do it you was know? It was Seattle in, at inside linebacker in the A-gap. Against Russell Wilson. You are correct. Yeah, I always, so, I'm always paying attention. We did a whole segment on that. I remember that we very did. clearly. Yeah, and made a whole YouTube video on it. I, I, there was a, there was a snowball, snowball quiz question. Yeah, so uh, Carter Coughlin did have two QB hits last year. He had five pressures, mostly coming from the edge spot. But one of the two QB hits that he did have was coming from the A-gap, lining up as like an inside linebacker, going around on a stunt and laying a pretty good licking on Russell Wilson in our biggest win of the year. Bobby, I have a feeling that... These Carter Coughlin takes that we're going to have in this episode, or at least at least me, that I may have in this episode, I may look back on it. Well, I've got some pump the brakes stuff. Like it's you should get excited about Carter Coughlin, but I do have some pump the brakes a little bit talk. I'm ready to I'm ready to anoint him Kyle Van Noy. I'm ready. I'm ready for yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's not the word like it's not like we're asking him like like Kyle Van Noy is not a crazy comparison. Yeah. You know also, Kyle. Well, people do act. I think people do give Kyle Van Noy a little bit more credit than he deserves sometimes because he's not like this great, awesome pass rusher who also can play interior linebacker. He's just a very good Swiss Army knife, and he's a very good versatile player where you never know what he's going to do or where he's going to be on a football field. So that is valuable within itself. And clearly, the New England slash Brian Flores slash Joe Judge line of thinking, Patrick Graham line of thinking, they value that too, and it works in their defenses. So I am ready to be like, this guy is going to be the next Kyle Van Noy. So, but like I said, we can look back at this 12 months from now because this guy was a seventh round pick and I could be like, wow, that, you know, way too high on Carter Coughlin. Or we can be like, you know what? That's exactly right. And the Giants would have two linebackers that they took in the seventh round of the 2020 draft who are major con tr contributors on their defense. And that is absolutely wild. Well, let me do my pump the break takes, and then we can go full in on on just full bloom. Like, what can Carter Coughlin be? I'm smiling too much. So We're recording this after the Jets game and before the Browns preseason game, so maybe, you know, maybe it's totally. Maybe we have to re-record this. But he hasn't been tested in coverage from the in, inside linebacker spot, and I don't think he's gonna ever gonna be like destructing first team offensive line blocks in the run game. You know, like he's gonna have to win with his speed and aggression, which is fine. You know, like I'm fine with that too. You know, he could be the he could be the starter next to Blake Martinez playing like that. But he did look good, man. And the th first thing I look for, especially with someone who's young and, and and in Carter Coughlin's case, new to the position, is do you play aggressive and with instincts and not afraid of making mistakes? Because I think that really is the, just the difference of of like all these guys can play in the NFL. They all have ability. You know, I really do think the biggest difference is. How quick do you process plays, and do and when you process, do you go, or do you sit there and then you let it take on a block, and you you know you play half the man, and then you're making a tackle five yards down the field. Like I think that's what the difference is between bad linebackers and okay and and like good linebackers is a lot of the time it's just that, you know it's why I like a guy like Tay Crowder's like he doesn't just sit there. T.J. Brunson he does. Um, I hope T.J. Brunson gets healthy, uh, come back stronger next year. But yeah, he I mean he looked good. He was playing his gaps quick, 
aggressively, instinctively. You know, he had to tackle for a loss. And it's like, okay, he can do if he can do all that and be the same pass rusher that he is, he's going to be a true blue weapon for Patrick Graham. Like we talked about, you know, like he can he can win versus slow offensive tackles. Well, guess what slow offensive tackles are in the NFL? Centers and guards. So he's going to be able to win those battles as a pass rusher brought in. And then you could put him out on the edge and be like, hey, bend the corner on this. This is third down. We're blitzing. Get around that edge. And if he oversets, kill his ass inside. Like he can do all that stuff. Like if he can be a even just a serviceable inside linebacker, he's a, he's a big time weapon for Patrick Graham. Yeah, absolutely. And one of his, speaking of his quickness, one of his pressures that he did have last year was against Cincinnati where, you know, he doesn't run around a guy. You know, he actually, in. it was in, inside. And he like also set him up outside, overset, bam, inside. Yep. And then he put that foot in the ground and he cut right inside. He also did a pretty solid job. I'm excited for him if he goes up against tight ends in the run game as well, where, yeah, you know, guys like Jedrick Wills, you know, maybe he got pushed around a little bit. And I, I know some other people have said that Carter Coffin got pushed around a little bit towards the latter half of the season when going up against tackles. But if he's going to be lining up on the edge a little bit more, kind of like as like this off-ball linebacker more this year, if you want to put a tight end up against him, good luck. I mean, our edge rushers and Carter Coffin is a pseudo edge rusher. Those guys are expected to win those one-on-one -on -one battles with blocking tight ends. They're expected to win those battles. And he did it last year against Cleveland. I think the, the best plays that he had in the Cleveland game were when he was, was when he was going up against tight ends. And I think he did the same thing in Seattle as well. So this dude can be a Swiss army knife. There's a lot of Swiss army knives on this giants defense, which is a really, really cool thing where you never know what they're going to be. You never know where they're going to go. Love is one of them. Uh, Carter Coffin's right up there with uh, a versatile Julian love as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to spend too much time, like, you know, just repeating the same takes, but, like, he can be a weapon. If he can play that inside linebacker position, okay, he can be a weapon. And, you know, I think, you know, if he can turn to next Kyle Van Noy, awesome. But if he's not, like, as good as still, like, a seventh-round pick, being yeah. someone who you can play 40% of the snaps or whatever, like, is fine, too. And I think he would, if he continue, if he shows out for the rest of preseason like this, and then can train, like, why, why can't he... Why can't he take the role of, uh, you know, per, uh, surpass Tay Crowder and Reggie Ragland? You know, and people, I mean, people know I like Tay Crowder. And Reggie Ragland's, you know, he's like, he's a solid linebacker in the NFL. But there's no reason why Carter Coughlin can't, uh, you know, like like take take that number two role next yeah. to Blake Martinez. Yeah, take more of a role. But, you know, we got to see him against starters. Yes, you know, we're, we're high on the sky based off of performance of his against backups. We got to see him more or less with starters. He's transitioning to this position that he was projected, to, I guess, you know, the, the draft talking heads and maybe the people inside the building wanted him to be like this off ball linebacker from the jump. But because of the edge depth chart last year, it was just tough and he couldn't do it. You know, the inside linebacker depth was OK with Crowder and Martinez there pretty consistently. And then the edge depth chart obviously dwindled from the first quarter of the season down to Kyle Fackrell. And then who the hell is this guy? I was very anti-switch Carter Coughlin to interior linebacker when it first happened because I briefly watched that you know segment that we did when it was when it was announced that he was going to, and the reason why I was against it is because he was just so naturally good of a pass rusher with some good pass rushing moves from a guy that we took in the seventh round, and that's usually pretty rare. That's usually pretty rare for a guy to. You know, first of all, even just in the first three rounds of the NFL draft, sometimes you're just drafting an athlete and they're hoping they can develop some of those moves. But this guy had the pedigree. He had the uh, production in the Big Ten. Plus, also he had all those pass rushing moves. So I was against it at first. But now, it, you know, now it's like, well, if they if they've carved out this role and he could still have the best of both worlds of being a pass rusher, plus what a typical interior linebacker does, I'm all for it. Right on. All right, we appreciate you guys. We'll see you next time. Until then, let's go Big Blue.